Hello and welcome back to Real Fishing 2, The Walkthrough. Today we are heading to the Red Sea Bream. Yes, Red Sea Bream is what we're after. This is a very short season in this game. Red Sea Bream is only available for a couple of months, uh, April, May, June, I think. So three months out of the year. So you have to kind of time your fishing a little bit carefully in this game. You can move forward in time. You can advance the calendar forward, but you can't move backwards. So and every fishing session of about 10 minutes here takes up one week of time. Yes one week of time. So one of the first things we take a look at here, of course, is the description. Uh, the Red Sea Bream are spawning in here. It looks splendid at this time, so it's very popular. Um, you can change your depth when you're fishing with the uh, the default rig here with the R1 and R2 buttons. There's a couple other species here that you can uh, nab. We're not going to look at those today, but uh, I've been doing those off stream mostly. So as you can see, I already have a 2.17 footer in the bag there. If you're looking at my menu, we're going to switch the lineup to 50 pounds. But otherwise, I go with the default rig for this one. And you can adjust the depth, like I said, with the R1 and R2 buttons. Um, this one, I unlocked it in the month of June. So I did a session or two uh, getting myself up to a two footer. You do need to catch a, according to the manual, a two foot eight inch fish. So that'd be a 2.66 foot. So this is a, again, the manual and the, uh, <laughs> and the in game use different, uh, different conversions. So you've got uh, decimals in the actual game. And then of course, inches in the manual. So even with 50 pound line, the larger size here, and this one is over two footer because you can tell by the, the sound it makes it's an over two footer. I remember looking for 2.66, I guess. You can tell by that sound, and they are rather difficult to bring in. The hook set has to be fast for this fish. This is not a fish that you wait around very long. This is a, you got to hit them quick. So as soon as you see them take the bait, don't wait for them to start turning the body. They got to go fast. So uh, the larger sea bream here are pretty difficult to bring in because they will, uh, they'll, they'll kick a lot. So they'll try to throw the hook out. And if you can't turn them after three kicks that, you know, they'll throw the hook out. Seems like the bigger ones can hold on to that kick a little easier as you're pulling. And of course they can snap your line. So if you're doing the reel or the fast reel, when they go into kicking and you start trying to pull that rod, they'll snap you just as we see right there. So um, I needed to, at that point, probably let go, loosen the drag a little bit, um, and then and then try to turn them. Sometimes you can't control it. So these fish were trying to uh, trying to adjust. I'm double checking my 50 pound line again. So we're trying to adjust to the the fighting style of these sea bream, and uh, just like real life, when you bring fish close to the boat, so when when you're bringing them really close, and your line length is pretty short. They can increase your tension very quickly and they can snap you off. They can bust you really easily. So, so those bigger fish, it seems like you do a little bit better if you have some play with them when they have more line out, but you run into a lot of risk in keeping them on the line because they can start kicking and throwing the hook. So it, you wanna try to get them in quickly if you can, but you really can't horse them to use a real life fishing term. And uh, I lost a number of over two footers. This one is not an over two footer. You can tell by the sound it's making. I lost a number of those fish very close to the boat here because the line would be really short. They'd be tired out. I'd bring them way up from the bottom, which is another problem here. This is quite deep. So even when they're right next to the boat, you still have to bring them up from the bottom and they'll often run to the bottom. So in that time though, your line length gets really short. And so if they go into a uh, into a fight, into a into a run, then you're in trouble. Here's another larger one, and that stretching sound is the sound of your line getting close to breaking. That's your, your audio cue. You also, of course, have the force feedback from your controller. So there is one I was able to get him turned just barely. And so this fight's still on, but you can see how dangerous they are. They can go into that and they can kind of mix up what they're doing. Sometimes they can run, sometimes they can do the, uh, the trying to throw the hook, the kicking, I call it, I guess. Uh, here I'm adjusting the drag a little bit looser. Uh, when you push the X button, you reel slowly. And then when you hold X and square, you do a fast reel. So you can kind of control when you're doing a slower reel in and a fast reel in, and you're trying to manage your line tension. Um, although, you know, times like this, you can be reeling when they're not going on a big run, you can pull some in. But again, you're running the risk. If you get them too close to the boat too quickly, uh, they will snap you off. So here's one that is right next to the boat. 
and I just need to bring them up from the bottom. And that's the hard part, is getting it to come from the bottom all the way up. And you've noticed, if you've been watching, he's been running towards the bottom almost every time he's gone on a run. He's going straight down. Um, and so I'm trying to loosen my drag to let him have some line, let him bring that out. And we'll see what we can do with this guy. Sometimes they will uh, do this. The, the kicking right there um, was, a, was away from me, but actually that can sometimes be facing the boat. You can be reeling them in and they'll go into that, that hook throw or that kicking animation and they will uh, they'll throw you. And no matter what I've been doing or trying with uh, pulling the reel or rod different ways, left, right, and back, um, I'm often not able to turn them out of that. So you also, I, I don't know what's going on with this level, but you, you get a very difficult perspective challenge here where sometimes it's hard to see when a fish actually bites because they are so much larger and you have such a zoomed in look at your bait. You don't often get a good look and there are there are interesting looks here because these uh, the sprites of these fish don't do well when you try to see them at uh, certain angles. From a broad angle like this, they're fine, but sometimes if you're looking straight down the body of a fish, it turns into uh, almost like the old Tomb Raider graphics where things are just blocky and then there's a big hole in the textures. So sometimes these fish look like they are, uh, they're hollow. They're like a chocolate bunny fish. You see that with the rocks a little bit on the bottom if you're looking closely, but trying to uh, nitpick on PS1 era 3D graphics is a little bit tired, so hopefully that's the last time we're going to do it here. But the it does give you a challenge in perspective and trying to see, well, when is the fish taking my bait when I can't really see the bait uh, because the fish's body is blocking it, and all I can get is just this huge like fish eye and a fish mouth, and that's all that's on your field of view. So that's a little bit challenging. So this, you can tell, is a larger fish. We're, we're playing him pretty patient. I'm bringing him up, but you can see how long it takes to bring a fish up from the bottom. And he can go into a run any time here. And he goes into a kick. I'm able to pull him out of the kick. And again, I pulled him up. He went into a run, but I think because he was a little bit more tired, I was able to turn him uh, without too much difficulty. There he went into a kick again. That could have easily been a loss right there. And right there, I thought for sure I had lost him. When he got to the to the surface and, and turned on me, I thought that was it, but I was able to turn him again. And there's that sweet sound of the uh, knowing that you've caught a fish that's going to advance you. So we are going to jump on here to the next level. So the next uh, C level is summer inshore fishing. It's another kind of variety fishing area. And then we still have the freshwater. This also unlocks the Satsuki trout. So it unlocks in a weird order here. So now we had unlocked stage 12 for Amago trout. This unlocks stage 11, the Satsuki trout. And if you look at the description, you'll see the picture that I put on Twitter of the, uh, the flow chart of levels. So if you like this series, please, please, please let me know. I do like to uh, read your comments down below. You can also hit me up on Twitter where I am active underscore ATE. And of course, enjoy the real fishing relaxation videos that are just the soundtrack with animations playing on this series as well.